Majority of folks that are planning to move to Florida have a checklist of wants and needs. And for most of you, topping that list is a sparkling, crystal clear, cool you down in the summer pool that begs you to float around all day. But do you know all that comes with purchasing a home with a pool? Today I'm sitting with Jason, which works with one of the top pool builders in Tampa, Florida. And we're gonna fill you in on everything you need to know about owning a home with a pool. And stick with me through this video because at the end, we're gonna show off a few of Jason's pool designs. Now let's go. Welcome if you are new to my channel and new to me, I'm Adam Morjan and I make videos all about what it's like living in Tampa, Florida, covering the best neighborhoods and things to do so you can get a real feel for what it's like living here. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell because we have a ton of great content to share with you and you really won't want to miss it. And if you're thinking of moving to Tampa, Florida, I am a licensed realtor, so see that number on the screen? Give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email because my team and I would love to help you find the perfect home for you and your family. Okay, so no surprise here that owning a pool home in Florida is for the cool kids. But I don't want you to get caught off guard with some things that are often overlooked. So before running down to Florida with your eyes on the prize, I thought it would be good in this video to share with you the pros and cons of owning a pool, buying a home with a pool versus building a new pool, screen enclosures, how much value does a pool add to your home, and more. So without further ado, let me introduce my special guest today. <laughs> I'm here with Jason from Sharper Image Pools. They are a custom pool builder with over 50 years of experience right here in the Tampa Bay area. They can build everything from your standard backyard pool to high-end custom pools with rock walls, with fire pits, and built-in slide for the kiddos. And they really do a great job at transforming your backyard into an entertaining oasis. I know because Jason personally designed my pool and completely knocked it out the park. So Jason, you get people asking you to design pools for all different reasons, and I have to imagine that this is the exciting part for most people. They have an idea of, or they pictured what a pool will do for them. So share with me some of the reasons, or I'll call them pros, why homeowners want to have a pool. Thanks, Adam, and thanks for having me on your channel. I would say uh, weekend entertainment in the backyard space is probably number one or two priority for people, um, you know, and that's combating with the kids. I know I have two kids. I have a two and seven year old. Adam has a couple, and uh, with iPads and all the entertainment that people are glued to, these kids these days, right in their face, it's great to come home and have them go, "Hey, we're going outside. Let's get hot. Let's get in the pool. Let's relax." So, you know, just uh, keeping the kids busy and swimming all year round. We are in Florida. Yeah, it it, it saves me having the three and seven year old when the kiddos come over, jump in the pool, splashing around. I'm not gonna lie, I might have a cold one watching the football game, but uh, yeah, so what other things do you see that, uh, you know, reasons why people are coming up with, hey, gotta have that pool? Yeah, so again, it just goes to the, the fact that we are in Florida and it's hot year round. There's only three months out of the year on average, three and a half maybe, where people are asking me about a heater. So, you know, when you, when you have this opportunity to be playing in your backyard and making the square footage of your home turn into that backspace as well, uh, it's a no-brainer whether you're buying a house with a pool or you're getting ready to uh, design your own. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm guilty. I like the pool water at like 80 degrees. So I would say eight months, nine months out of the year, I'm good to go. But on those, you know, January, February, March, uh, even December, yeah, I'll throw that heater on for a bit just to bring it up to temp and I can swim. So yes, we can swim in December, sometimes in January. I'm you know, I might not January, you know, 1st or maybe February not jump in the pool, but having that heater, we'll definitely, the kids are brave enough to jump in at least once. But come April, we're back to basics and we're, we're in that pool. So absolutely. And I think for most people, uh, they can relate to that list. Unless you're from one of those colder regions, then you can't exactly swim in a warm pool all year round. So let's jump into some things that people may not know or consider if they haven't owned a pool before. So let's talk about the maintenance. Talk to me about that, Jason. Yeah, so you know, maintenance comes from just basically cleaning your, keeping your pool clean, and that varies from making sure there's no leaves and debris in it to cleaning your skimmer, and then uh, cleaning your filter maybe once a month on average. Uh, it's not a lot of work. Um, you, have to, you also have the opportunity to pay a company um, to come out and clean your pool. If you have that done once a week on average, you're spending between 100 and 150 bucks a month, so it's not too bad either. Yeah. I. I, I Pinch a penny, that's one of the companies here. Uh, it's nothing better, you call it a cabana boy, but they're not. Uh, but they come out and they clean your pool, you know, leaves. Uh, what else do we have to do? 
brush the pool. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta brush the, the, the sides, all the algae build up. You know, people kind of overlook these things. They just think about the fun times. So really understanding the cleaning, uh, which is a weekly thing here in, in, in Tampa, is uh, a must have. What about maintenance? Other than cleaning, what, what are we looking at for maintenance? Yeah, so chemically balancing your water. Um, I would, you know, I get asked once in a while if chlorine is a thing anymore, and you know, te technically we're chlorinating our pool no matter what we use. But I guess that comes from people not being sure if they should be using salt or not. And uh, I would say in the last couple of years, I have not done a chlorinated pool. I've done salt pool. Um, now, now, real quick, not yeah. I'm sorry, I'm jumping yeah, in. Yeah, go ahead. Salt water pool. Some people think, oh, it's going to be salty. It's going to taste like salt or whatever. Um, I try to explain to them that salt conversion is just turning salt to chlorine, but a softer correct. version. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And so, okay, basically, what does uh, what does that do for the pool or, or people? It's much better on your skin. Um, I don't. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Florida, so I remember back in the day when everything was chlorine. Blonde girls would end up with green hair. I don't know if that's a thing anymore. It, 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 yeah. But it just rings a bell. But um, yeah, it's just better on your skin, and uh, it's just easier to maintain. If you end up with automation on your pool, you can actually see your salt count on your phone. Uh, so easy, you know, easy maintenance, no big deal. All right, and then my last pool that I actually had, it was an older pool. It had some buildup, and I noticed the uh, the grout lines in between the tile where the water line was. Some of that was like built up calcium and this and that. And from my understanding, that comes from bad maintenance. Uh, mind you, it was the people before me that owned it, but it was bad maintenance, and those chemicals do damage that faster than something like a softer salt, right? Yeah, and it's it's easy. Don't get overwhelmed with it. It's something as simple as taking a little file, throwing it in your pool, taking it over to pinch a penny, and they go, here, put this in your pool, it'll be better. So uh, it's nothing hard. So, so good cleaning, good maintenance. Um, last part of that is structure. People, you know, yeah. and we're going to dive into this a little bit more in this video, but as you're buying a home with a pool, you're going to think about the structure of the pool that goes along with this maintenance. I mean, what is something to know about, the, you know, just maintaining the structure of the pool? Yeah, so leak detection is a big thing uh, to, to utilize when you're trying to find out if your pool has leaks and where they're coming from. Um, we do remodels as well, so a lot of the remodels I go to, we, we offer leak detection. I'd say 90% of the time it's coming from the skimmer area. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the skimmer is, that's where the water is going in from your pool to maintain its cleanliness, so the leaves will go into that bucket. Um, but when they build a pool, they put the rebar around that, and if they don't bend that rebar, uh, if they cut it to put the skimmer in, that's a weak point in the beam of the pool. So something to look out for and it is repairable. It's not a big deal, but. And then structure, one of the, and thank you for bringing that up because I didn't even think of that, but I was more leaning towards uh, going into the resurfacing of pools that people forget about. So they just buy a pool and think it's gonna be solid forever. I mean, how often do you have to resurface the pool, which is like the interior of the pool? Yeah, I mean, it almost is forever because if you think about it, uh, if you maintain your pool really well, I've seen new pools go for 20 years with the, with the current interior surface, uh, if that's a quartz interior surface, which is pretty standard, or a mini pebble. Uh, the, 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 the average range is 15 to 20 years on those if you take care of your pool. Okay. Um, to resurface them and get that done again is anywhere from five to 10 grand, somewhere in that gap, depending on the size of your pool and if you have a spa. All right, so safe to say if you're looking at a older pool, yeah. One of the things you have to think about is when is the next time I have to resurface this pool, which may be $10,000. You got a budget for that and keep that in mind. I feel like it's when my daughters want a puppy for Christmas. And as a parent, you tell them, honey, you have to feed it and take it out to go to the bathroom and train the puppy and play with the puppy often. And of course, take them to the vet, etc. So it's a pretty big commitment. And you're, you know, are you ready for that? And my daughters, without skipping a beat, say, yep. So we all know how that goes. Most people, they're still gonna be buying the pool once they set their mind to it. So the question now turns to, should you buy a home with an existing pool or buy a home without a pool and add it yourself? So let's talk through that. Jason, what are some of the things to know or look out for when buying a home with an existing pool? Can you talk to me about some of the pros and cons, uh, you know, just, Things to think about. The pros of having a pool when you already purchase your home is the kids are running right through the front door when you get those keys before the first box is down, they're probably jumping in the pool. So it's a great benefit when you're buying a home in Florida to have a, a pool for that reason. The other plus for having a pool is you don't have construction design costs and extra expenses after you close and you wanna just enjoy your new home. So I would say the pros of having it is it's already there and you're ready to go. Um, if we were going to jump into the cons, which we don't really like to talk about with pools, but we'll get into that, um, is, you know... They the, have to know. <laughs> they have to know. You, you, you know, yeah. what, what if you get in the house and it's not a pool that you would have designed, right? What if it has a spa and you didn't want a spa? You have to kind of keep all these things in mind because you're not really removing the spa and 
Let me tell you, if you want to add a spa to a pool, you're anywhere from 25 to 35,000. It's almost like getting its own pool. So look at the house and look at the pool that you're getting ready to get and don't think just because I'm getting a pool, it's there. Make sure it's a pool that you like. And for me, again, going back to that older pool that I, I had, it had some like 1980s tile line, you know, burgundy tile on it. And I just kind of had to sit there and take it. And every time I looked at that pool, I was like, it's cool, I love it, I got a pool guys, but designing a pool with you now, I get yeah. to actually have a nice modern pool and I look at it and it's amazing. So, pros and cons. Okay, now let's compare that to adding in a pool after purchasing a home. So like, what's that look like? Um, talk to me about maybe the cost of the pool um, and other you know pros and cons of basically getting able to put it in after yourself. Yeah, so for us, I don't wanna speak for every pool company, but it's an average of seven to nine months from contract signing to completion of your pool. So once you close in your house, that process begins as soon as you want it to, to, to start. Um, you know, the benefits are that you're going to get to design it how you want to design it. And from a cost perspective, if you did a simple rectangle pool with a few pavers around it, ready to swim, you're around $50,000 these days, between forty and $55,000. Um, and you, that's 2022 prices. After yeah. labor, after <laughs> yeah. prices have gone up, it's about fifty. Yeah, so. sure. So then, of course, you want to add a spa and you want to add a cage and the whole thing. You could be jumping upwards of eighty to 100000 for a pool, if not more. So. Okay. And some of your designs, obviously, the, the you know we'll talk about that at the end here, but you know it can go to the roof. So your imagination is the limit, but for the average Joe, myself included, we're talking fifty thousand, five feet of pavers around it, and, sure. and a really nice pool. Um, by the way, you said seven to nine months, so that that is definitely a downside for anybody that's putting in a pool because while that's not the end of the world, I just waded through that. I can tell you that your kids, your wife, yourself everybody's getting antsy and you're like, where are these guys? How come they're not showing up? Um, just because that's part of the process, you're waiting for permitting. But you're also like, I want this thing done, I wanna yeah. swim. My kids are asking me every day, when am I swimming? So, um, you know, throw in a couple other cons that maybe I didn't just mention. Yeah, so for me, uh, you know, I, I always tell my clients, you know, the design process, if they, you know, I feel like it's art. I'm taking a flat backyard, hopefully, and, and designing it into what they wanna hang out in in the future. Um, so I always use the analogy of a painting, you know, people like to buy art, they like to buy a painting. Well, have you ever watched the person paint that? You don't want to stare at them while they're doing it for months. So, you know, I think the process is one of those things where it just seems like it takes forever because you're so antsy, but it's exciting. So, yeah. 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 And you know, for me, I'd say the biggest downside just going through this, uh, is just your backyard's a construction zone. Mm -hmm. It stinks. You know, you can't use your backyard. So you got to walk the dog in the front. Kids have to play in the front. So there is a little bit of a negative side, but I will tell you that there's nothing better than picking and choosing all of those finishes and having your pool, you know, at the end of that nine months. And you know, spring's coming up right now. We're in April. I am ready to swim. I can't wait for, uh, you know, uh, basically the summer months with my kids. One thing I wanted to add to that real quick is if we, you know, go back to the part of buying a house that has a pool already. Just because the layout is is like you like it and it's cool, but you don't like any of the colors. Don't worry about the colors. You can invest a little bit of money and add pavers if it's a concrete deck. You can change the waterline tile. You're going to need to probably resurface it at some point anyway, so look for that pitting. But at that point, you can change the interior color, you can change the waterline tile, and you can add a new deck to it. So if the footprint of the pool in that existing home is right, then keep that in mind. Awesome. Thank you, man. So that's a lot of good info right there, but I want to press the pause button for two seconds. I hope this information is helpful to you. And if you're planning to move to the Tampa Bay area, please reach out to us as my team and I would love to help you and your family find your next home. And if you need a pool in that brand new home or have any questions, Jason's contact will be on the screen and it'll also be in the video description box below. So give him a shout because he loves what he does and he'd be glad to take your call. So back to it. I look at every home as an investment. Why? Because for the most part, it's the biggest asset that you own. When adding a pool, it's a big choice and it's smart to weigh out the added value or potentially the loss in value you may get from your decision. So what is the added value you get when adding a new pool to a home? Speaking to you with my realtor hat on, as mentioned, a new pool will start somewhere around 50,000. Sure. And if you were to sell your home, an appraiser would only give you back around 30,000 plus or minus. So you can see that loss. So a pool is not an investment that you would put in to gain value on your home. Now that's not to say that there's no added value. In the eyes of most home buyers, having a pool is a benefit and could rank you in the top tier of homes on the market when it comes time to sell. And the buyer could be more attracted to your home and maybe willing to pay a little extra versus, you know, a home without a pool. For me, I decided to put a pool in because of the reasons that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, having a three and a seven year old, 
I wanted to turn my backyard into a place where my kids could burn off some energy and we could just enjoy the weekends. You can now have kids in your neighborhood, you know, come over for birthday parties or pool parties. And while I don't have a man cave, my pool became that sanctuary. Jason helped me build out a sun shelf on the shallow end and lined it up with a covered area of my home where I could hang a TV on the wall and build a nice little bar. And now I get to watch the Bucks on Sundays and the neighborhood dad swing by for a beer and we catch the game while just enjoying the pool life. And I call it my man cave 2.0. Moving on to another big topic that most people moving here have questions on, to screen in the pool or not. You have seen those big screen enclosures covering the pool coming off the house. What are they for and why would you add them? Or should you just go without it? So Jason, what are your thoughts on this and why would someone add a screen and what are some of the reasons why they wouldn't? Yeah, so I would say bugs, my number one concern being a Floridian, we have mosquitoes that'll pretty much whack you, knock you down sometimes. Like a goalie, a dart, <laughs> dart competition. <laughs> yeah, and it's warm year round, so it's not like that goes away except for a couple months out of the year. Uh, so that's probably number one. Number two would be to help keep the debris and leaves out of your pool. Um, so when you are purchasing a house, whether it has a pool or you're thinking about getting one, look at the oak trees around it or any other trees that might be dropping leaves or uh, we have that time of year, we call them Florida fall, I guess. We don't have season changes, but we do have <laughs> leaves that fall on the ground. Yep. And those will fall in your pool. You'll have extra cleaning to take care of. So uh, that could be beneficial to you depending on your property if you like a screen enclosure or not. Okay, awesome. And then. Uh, is there anything else that you should prep for if you decide to build a screen? Is there anything else you should do during that process? Yeah, one of the things I recommend if people are unsure about a screen, because you don't have to have it right when you get your pool, let's get the kids swimming, right? Plus there's added a cost there, so you can do it later. I would do recommend getting the footer, which is basically your concrete that's going to go around the border of your pavers. Mm -hmm. I recommend getting that put in at the time the pavers are being laid. That way, if you want to put the screen later, you're not destroying your deck or having to add that later on. So I would take that cost up front and go ahead and get it just in case you want to add the screen later. Okay, so in my situation building my pool, I did not put a screen. Uh, the mosquitoes, technically, they come out in the evening. They're not here just flying around all day eating you, for the most part. And so I can swim all day and I get full sun, so it's great. I don't mind cleaning the leaves out of my pool. But in that decision, what Jason just said is smart, is to go ahead and put those footers in in case I change my mind or my wife says, hey, we need that screen. I can always add that after the fact. Correct. All right, so now to the fun part of the video, sort of the MTV cribs of pool building. Since you work with a custom pool builder, what are some of those wild designs? I wanna hear about those, you know, some of the ones maybe you've done or you've seen while being in the industry. Let's talk about that because I just think that's the fun part. It is, yeah. Although, you know, I love doing a standard pool and, and getting a family where they need to be. There are some wild things going on out there. Um, yeah, if somebody, sorry to jump, jump yeah. in. If somebody basically comes to you and says, no budget, <laughs> I want this, what, what are you seeing? <laughs> I haven't seen no budget yet. I have seen super high budgets, uh, but I've never seen none. Um, but one of the wild ones I've done and, and, uh, and added was a fire pit in the middle of a pool. That was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and that was just a gas fire pit. They come off there and I walk downstairs so you're sitting actually in a bowl in the middle of your pool. Uh, the other nice feature about that was kids could play on this side and splash and the adults could float on that side and splash and there was a seating area in the middle. So ate up some pool space. Win-win. Win-win. Uh, another really cool one we did was uh, for a... Uh, a musician he plays the piano and he said Jason I'm gonna have a moat in my front yard it's gonna be all uh, you know basically like a pool chlorinated we're gonna put rock features and waterfalls and he asked me to put a flaming piano he wanted the keys on fire Jerry Lee and Lewis. an infinity <laughs> edge on the back side of this piano so when you walk up to his front door there's literally a, a spa essentially in his front uh, I don't know moat I used to tease him there's dragons in it uh, so and you know anything anything if you can, if the if the city or county will approve it and you want it and we have a budget for it let's do it yeah and that's a good point we didn't really touch on one of the best things about using a pool builder that knows what they're doing is they can circumvent or they can work through the permitting process to allow some of these things that you want and allow your imagination to go wild I mean he just told me about a guy that put a lazy river around his house which is essentially like a second pool but uh, if if you could think of it for the most part they can do it. All right, so while I am happy with my pool, I, I think I'm gonna have to start playing the lotto again because I'm gonna need to prep for that man cave part three. So we've touched on the good, the bad, and the ugly of becoming a homeowner with an existing pool, as well as the ins and outs of popping in a new pool. So at this point, you probably have a better idea of which way you lean if you were to buy a home, but your next step is to figure out where to live. And that's where we come in as my team. So if you're planning to move to the Tampa Bay area, see that number on the screen, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email because my team and I would love to help you find your next home. So until that next video, I'll catch you later.